So, is it working? As always, we got to do some checking. Okay. Got to see if the music's too loud. We got to see if you can hear my voice. We got to see if the connection is okay. And I love you, my boys and girls. Okay. Let me see. Got my cup of coffee. Hey, hey everyone. I'm terribly sorry for the slight delay. I had to go out with the dogs. I had to do some other stuff. And before we could start echoey. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can see what... Whew. I think it's this one. Is it better now? I think it should be better. It should be better now. Hello to everyone. Is the echo gun? Is the echo gun? I think there were two microphones activated. Ooh. Uh, is it better now? Still echo? Seriously? Or is it just this delayed? Gotta chat with you guys. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it's now better. All right, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to talk loud. Can you hear the music in the background? What's your question, Daniel Mastalers? <laughs> Whatever your name is. What's up, Eigenbro boys? Um, before we get started, <laughs> finally, can you see it? It even says Popo Flammy. Popo Flammy, my boys and girls. Ooh, goodness. Okay, then um, I think we can get started. Today's show, my boys and girls out there, is going to be brilliant yet again. I hope you can see my, sh my, 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 my screen. You should be able to see my screen. And now we are going to go ahead and get started. What I plan for today is that we are going to do some linear algebra. Okay, linear algebra. Because there's this new linear algebra course that Brilliant offers. Every time I use HDMI, something's weird with the... Never mind. Um, let me see linear algebra, linear algebra. There's this new one. I need to find it. Thanks for everything. Yeah, con congratulations to the Papa. Where's the linear algebra one? I have to look for it. Mm, this is the new one. Linear algebra with applications. Do you know that you can spell applications without the word apple? Applications? It is what it is. We're going to go ahead and start the course. I haven't tried it yet. It's a new one. Brian just added this course. And we are going to give it a nice little shot. Vectors can describe any quantity with magnitude and direction. You don't say. Blah 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 stuff. Also, this video has been sponsored by Brain. If you don't know what it is, take a look into the link. Into the take a look into the description. There's a link at the top. There you can find Brain. You can try it out for completely free. Okay, no credit card or anything required. How did you learn math vocabulary in English? I'm gonna take up this job that needs proficient. I don't know. Um, I. I get my stuff from the internet, so all like the language, I don't know, it just flies by and you learn from it. Okay, what is the vector? Something's weird with the screen. Can you see this? Something is a um, bit weird. Sometimes the screen drags along, weirdly. It's, it's only on the brilliant side. Okay, now we have like speed. Okay, that's supposed to be a vector and we can move it around. 
let me see. For example, let's say that there are three islands labeled P, Q and R. A boat travels from P to Q and then from Q to R. In other words, it first moves along PQ and then along QR. PR, on the other hand, tells us where the boat starts off and where it finally stops. How is PR related to PQ and QR? PR is exactly the length that you add together, I suppose. Yay, correct. I mean, it, it does make sense. Yeah, brilliant is the new Raid Shadow Legends, but only for scientific channels and, and math channels like mine. Oh, I got a one day streak. This is crazy. This is crazy. I started a streak. Mm. Now let's take a closer look at the sum rule. To add V and W together, we move W's tail to V's tip. Oh, <laughs> just a tip. Is the arrow joining? V's tail to W's tip. Do we get a different result if we instead move V's tail to W's tip? Um, I believe. Let me see if we add those together to one negative I'm not certain to be honest when it comes to the, um, let's say one, two, I mean it commutes, right? So like addition commutes, so there shouldn't be any difference. Yeah. Uh, why was I even thinking about that? We need more complex analysis content. Yeah. Maybe in the near future, my eigenbro boy, let us continue. We just saw that addition on vectors commute. Well, maybe in the real numbers, it's a vector space. Okay. R to the nth power, basically. So the order doesn't matter. But suppose we add the three arrows all together. Does the order of addition matter now? No. <laughs> Why? No. Doesn't matter. Nice warm cup of coffee. Pretty good. To recap. Yes. Okay. We, we know that they commute. Okay. And associativity works. Hey, Papa, what up? Nothing, Ranja. Nothing. Now my wife is closing the door on me. <sighs> she just captured me. <laughs> Maybe I'm too loud, probably. I just let it be open because of the internet connection. <laughs> so, the scalar multiplication rules for arrows, for arrows, <laughs> are as follows. Yes, okay. Oh, there's a question down here that doesn't show up because of this weird bug. Given that we know about error notation, how do we interpret this? Well, I mean, it stays where it is. It's an error with no length, basically. Yeah, does make sense. Papa, you do some. You should do some group theory videos. Yeah, I, I plan on, on doing more of those. Also, by the way, you can become a member of the channel. You can support the channel by clicking the little join button down there and, and there are benefits with this. Okay, I, I like to emphasize on this. We just need five more members to unlock one more spicy little emoji. We already have Euleroid down there. So, so think about it. You could post Euleroids all the time. <laughs> so in many ways, zero arrow the zero arrow, that is weird, <laughs> plays the same role that zero does for real numbers. What other properties about zero arrow and arrow scalar multiplication are true? I mean, this applies. Okay. I mean, this does apply. It's a vector space. This does apply. It's a vector space. This does apply. It's a vector space. And this Everything, right? Yeah, that was um, pretty easy. Okay, let us go ahead. So we have a little conclusion here. It's linear algebra in a nutshell. So um, yeah, it's probably not too hard at first. Waves and abstract vectors. Oh, now we are, now we are getting our game up here. Okay, We're increasing our game. Okay, so we can express vectors as yeah, 
little superposition stuffy things. <laughs> the zero arrow. Hey, Dennis Gagsu. Hey, Werner. Werner Stein. <laughs> Back to space it is. <laughs> My main man's Werner. <laughs> also, subscribe to Werner Stein's new maths channel. He's about to hit 100 subscribers. So if you subscribe to him, you can make him reach 100 subscribers today. So go ahead and do this. He's trying his best. He's doing this pretty good for his, for his first attempts. Okay, not gonna lie. Okay. The notation from the last page is called a cat. Okay, where's the sea gun? Bracket. There's no sea. Where's the sea gun? This is weird. It's a wrapper. Used to indicate what an object is a vector by writing object as object. <laughs> For example, the animation below wraps a few waves in cat notation. Ooh. Oh, now I see what they have done. Okay, on the negative one, the wave goes backwards basically, and on the two, the amplitude gets increased. Mm -hmm. If it belongs to a vector space. Okay, now we have the cat notation. Okay, it's cat. Hey, Lustin, I've seen your email. I'm going to message you pretty soon, so no worries about that. Thanks. He's a member of mine. You can get this crazy nice meteorite next to your name if you become a member by, by clicking the join button. You can also get Jonas. Jonas. Bruh. No, I don't want bruh anymore. So, yeah. I I mean, everything that applies in the vector space also applies here when using the cat notation. Okay, let me see. Let's Let's prove, oh, we are about to prove something. Let's prove that waves form a vector space by checking that all of the properties hold. First, let's define scalar multiplication and addition. There's a natural way of scaling waves by non-negative numbers. Scaling a wave with amplitude a by c, it's a constant, changes its amplitude to c times a. There's also a natural way of multiplying a wave by negative one. Scaling a wave by negative one flips it over vertically. Yeah, that makes sense. Or make it go the other way, basically, I suppose. Describe the most sensible definition of scaling wave by C being less than zero. I mean, that the amplitude is scaled by C? Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's obvious. That's pretty obvious. I have to read about everything. I don't want to make stupid mistakes yet again just because I don't read everything right. Okay, we have A, B, C, D. The very definition of a scalar multiplication has multiplicative associativity and scalar distributivity built right in. Yeah, yeah, applications, that's a hard thing. Oh, goodness. <laughs> now let's show that our collection of waves has a zero vector. Hint, we know that zero has a blah. What can we learn from this? I mean, should be D. I mean, it does make sense because it doesn't have any amplitude anymore. So, this makes sense. <laughs> okay, now we can play around with the um, with the animation stuff. So that's a pretty cool thing about Brilliant. Um, I give them that. You can play around with the animations here. I mean, that that's some wiggly twiggly stuff that we have here. It's always fun playing around with those parameters. Okay. Yeah, we can also add some stuff together. Okay, let's see if wave addition has the same properties as arrow addition. It probably does because vector space, okay. Toggle through the various choices of waves. From what you can see, does wave addition seem commutative? Two and three. And Yeah. Yeah, probably. Joseph Joestar. Is that a fuck Jojo reference or what? 186 people watching, as it seems. Hello to everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm going to give this a little pie in the chat. Okay, post some pies in the chat. All the members out there, post a pie in the chat. 
Okay. The interactive below demonstrates which two wave. Oh yeah. The interactive demonstrates which two edition rules. Which one? Which edition rules? Okay. Um, <laughs> what we have is that we are adding a zero to it. That's the first one. And for the next one, we are adding the additive inverse. Exactly. That was easy. Okay. Subscribe to Werner Stein's channel. I want him to reach 100 subscribers today. Also, he only uh, he had birthday like I don't know two weeks ago. So, give him a subscribe. Okay, Werner Stein. Werner Stein. I'm posting it here. In the comments. Werner Stein. <laughs> okay. Let us see. Um, what do we have here? Which vector property, distributivity, associativity, commutativity is being displayed in the interactive? It's associativity, right? No, uh, distributivity. I was being stupid. I didn't see the C. The C was kind of um, invisible to me just because of those um, brackets that we had. <laughs> Didn't see those, didn't see those. Also, by the way, if you didn't notice, I got my silver play button today, hey! I'm officially a YouTuber now, okay? What, one of the big, big boys? <laughs> I'm raising my hand, Dennis Gökshu. Yes, that was okay. Why vector spaces? Well, because they are pretty good, hey, that's <laughs> pretty good. Okay. Um, Notation. Evaluate FG at T. Oh yeah, okay, this is just um, applying, basically. Raise your dongles for Papa Flemmy. I'm not going to raise my own dongle for Papa Flemmy. That would be weird. For reference, you can find the definition of the vector space here. I don't want that. Um, any signal of interest to a scientist is reevaluate function F of time T. Let's call the set of all such functions f. Also, by the way, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm being on brain.org at the moment. It's a website, you can find the link down there at the top of the description. You can try out for completely free, no credit card required, nothing. Try it out, you can support the channel big time this way. Okay, sponsored by Brain. just saying. Waves live in f. Ooh, they, they live in f. Where do they live exactly? Where do the waves live? Do they live, um, do the waves live here? Or do they live on top? Or maybe they are hiding here somewhere. Huh? Give me your opinion there in the chat. I want to see your opinion on where they live. <laughs> Two. But they are special since they repeat. But all the waves in the sub put all the waves in the subset called W. We can add functions and scalar mul multiply with the following rules. Yes. Okay. Which of the following statements is true? Mm. I'm going to go for C. I don't know why. It's just intuition. Subset of a... Is the subset of a vector space also a vector space? I'm not certain at the moment. Um, I'm not certain at the moment. Let me, let, let me see the explanation. Oh goodness, yeah, you should go through all those pro- Oh, yeah, that's definitely what what I thought about. Yeah, I, I mean, it just goes by the vector space rules. Yeah, okay, okay. It is what it is, okay, Papa Smart. <laughs> what vector in the subspace W is as close to F in F as possible? We call W a subspace because it is a space that's also a subset. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Matron. Thank you very much. I love you too, my boy. <laughs> 
In the picture below, the point plays the role of the signal. The line plays the role of W. W. Is it called W because it looks like W? I mean, it looks like double V. Shouldn't it be called double V rather than W? That's a weird thing. I always ask myself this. Also, do fish ever get thirsty? Just think about it. Just think about it. I mean, if you were to only drink salt water all the time, wouldn't you also be thirsty? I don't know. Maybe you're a sweet water fish. I don't know. Not judging you by your gender, okay? I don't care if you're a sweet water Predative fish or saltwater fish. I still love you, my fishy friend. Ah. I'm not going to calculate this right now. Blue the head, poor Odaku. Now, the Cartesian plane is a vector space, yes. I mean, it's R2. <laughs> it's a vector space, not, not even gonna think about it. <laughs> it's called double V in French? Well, that's kind of mind blowing to be honest. All fish are League of Legends players, so they are immune to salt. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All of those are so freaking salty. The sum of any two points on the line is another point on the line. Scaling the point on the line produces another point on the line. Okay. The line is in the subspace since it's not closed under addition. The line is in a subspace since it's not close under scalar multiplication. You can multiply by it and it just scales it up. The line is in a subspace since it's not closed under either operation. The line is a subspace since it's closed under both operations. The line isn't a true subset, I believe. Wait, if you were to add... Oh no! Those are points on the line. Ah! I was thinking about a line being add up with another line, so that would make a, another line, that's what I thought, but no, those are points on the line already. Um, yeah, I was being um, wrong there. Okay, you can move this around. There is the smallest possible distance. Yeah, de definitely. And the smallest possible distance should, should be perpendicular to this line segment there. Buzzfeed guy? Buzzfeed guy? I'm going to bend over. Is that enough for you? Um, extended boy. Ah. Okay. Ah, I hate this weird thing that is going on here. I don't know what it is. It's just doing weird things with my... Uh... This is just with the print website, to be honest. Why is it making this weird white line here? This is so weird. I don't understand this. Never mind. So... Let us move on. Okay, now we have stuff here. Mm hmm. This looks like we go into like Fourier stuff. Can we see the books in my collection? <laughs> no, you can't. They are Papa exclusives. <laughs> no one's ever going to see my little little sneaky books. Extended boy. The Gauss-Jordan process. I have no idea what this is. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, solving linear systems of equations. 
let's start with a down-to-earth application of linear systems. The cars are all spaced out, so that traffic enters and leaves the roundabout at constant rates. 24 cars enter from Euclid Avenue every minute, and twice the number that exit onto Borel Boulevard exit onto Germain Street. What equation must G and B satisfy? More than one may apply. 24 cars enter from Euclid Avenue. So 24 cars come from the Euclid Avenue. So 24 is something every minute and twice the number that exit onto Borel Boulevard exit onto Germain Street. So 24 um, let me see 24 are G plus B this is the number and we have that on Germain Street there are twice as many cars on Germain Street than am I right here? Okay, okay had to think about it. Okay. Mm, we have two unknowns, B and G, together with two equations. And this is solvable, definitely. So, it's uniquely solvable. A linear system is a collection of one or more linear equations in the same set of variables, blah, blah, blah. The A, I, G are called coefficients and the B, I's are called constants. Let's define B, X1 and G, X2 to be in line with this notation. Then, uh, that's a weird mess. What are the correct values for the coefficients a to 1 and a to 2? I mean, it's 2 and negative 1, right? Um, yes, okay. Just comparing coefficients. It was just a big mess. So on the other side, it, it looked just weird be, because of all the um, double inequalities there on one line. Now we have matrices. What's the augmented matrix given? Okay, yeah, uh, we, we have 24, 0. I mean, this makes sense. And we have 1, 1, 24, and 2, negative 1 on 0. Okay. That was easy enough. I mean, those are just... Um, what is the music? I don't know what's running right now. Just some playlist. Can't really tell you at the moment. Also, subscribe to Werner Stein if you see him. He's running a new YouTube channel. He's giving his best. Give him some love. Yeah, only 50%. I don't know why this happened. Okay. For example, write the traffic make matrix equivalent as blah 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 what numbers fill in the empty circle okay let me see for a second i have to think it through also where is my camera located is it on the okay there it is so i don't want to write behind my camera let me see for a second we are going to have um 1, 1, 2, negative 1, 24 and 0. Now we are going to multiply this by um, negative 2, negative 2, 2, negative 1. And then we have negative 84 and 0. One, one, twenty-four, 24. And we are going to have 0. And negative 3, negative 84. This is going to give us 1, 1, 0, 1, um, 24, and this is 16. Something with 16, okay. All right, that was easy enough. That was easy enough. Thank you, Luisa Gium. Luisa Gium. My collection is indeed magnificent, not gonna lie. Okay, so this is just Gaussian elimination, I suppose, what we are doing here. Oh, 
Only 10% done till now. Okay, now we are going to get on some computational stuff. As a 7 creator, I can say that I barely understand anything, but I still like it. Thank you, Khaled Khan. Okay. BG and W, we have zero W, so we have some zero there. And we have two negative one zero. Easy. Easy. I am so freaking cray, not gonna lie. Find a way to put the first column of the matrix into the form one zero zero. Ugh, yikes. That's a lot of stuff you have to manipulate there. That's a lot of stuff. Oh, Christian Malves. You're also in seventh grade. My boy. Hey, we saw Michael here. Um, let me see you for a minute. So, if we were to manipulate this by negative 3, then we have negative 3. And negative 3 and negative 3. So, this one can freak off. And then we have um, negative 72. Um, yeah, something with negative 72 we are going to get. And this is going to give us 0, 0, mm, negative 4 negative 72 and other than that we are going to have um let me think for a second that's a lot of computational stuff you have to do here so we are going to get um negative 2 negative 2 negative 2 negative 84 um 0 0 oh yeah i'm, I'm already done that's the first option then right ah goodness okay oh so much computational stuff. Echelon. Comes from the French echel, meaning ladder. Oh, I didn't know that. I was always uh, always wondering why it's called echelon form, whatever you call it. So, that's quite weird. Okay. Also, by the way, you can become a member. You can support the channel this way by clicking the little join button. Then you are able to post like negative 112 emojis there. So, just saying. Um, back to our game. We eliminated all the coefficients below pivots in our matrix. Now it's time to eliminate the coefficients above them. Working from right to left, eliminate all entries above the pivots. Complete the matrix below. Okay, let me see for a second. We are going to multiply the first one by two. So, this is... Oh no, no need to do this. Um, the second one by negative 2. Then we are going to get negative 90. Negative 96. Negative 96 is going to... Go oh goodness, I, I need my my pen and paper for this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, let me see for a second. I can do this in, in my head right now. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Um, linear algebra stuff. Goodness. So, for this one, we are going to have the first one and then we are going to have zero, negative three. We are going to make this zero. So, zero, zero, negative four, negative 72. Um, we are going to multiply this row. This is going to give us 6. Not negative 6, positive 6. Because we're, we are going to multiply it by negative 2. Then we are going to have 96. So not 69. We have 96. Mm. Okay. Oh no. Uh, 96 by multiplying this by 2. Negative 2, I mean. And then by adding those together, we are going to get, um, what is it? This is 18, 24. 24, okay. So this makes 12 overall, then. Um, okay. 
that's the question uh, we are probably going to get since this overtakes the one I believe we are going to get negative 2 and 12 ah, it's 2 and negative 12 ah yeah um, I I see because we have negative 3 there oh. The numbers are terrible, seriously. Okay, now uh, we have two up there. Then we are going to have four, two, four, eighteen. That was the way easier part. I mean, that was not too difficult. What is this? Yeah, we can make equivalent shifting and stuff. No, it's not algorithmics, it's um, it's linear algebra in a nutshell. Hello, Daniel Antruk. He's a member of my channel. You can also get this spicy little meteorite by becoming a member of the channel. Okay, let us continue. Markov chains, what's going on? That's sick. After a minute passes, she, it's a female frog. Oh, goodness, it's a female frog. One apple plus one apple equals to two apples. Analytic apple theory is the best. It's just the best. Papa brought down to his knees. Kinda, yeah. After a minute passes, she hops to one of two adjacent pads. We can't know for sure which way she'll go, but we are certain she won't stay on the same pad after minutes up. Let X be the probab <laughs> probability, uh, probability theory. Um, I'm going to get to vector calculus after this one or Yeah, let's get to vector calculus after this one mm -hmm. Uh, yay, thought so. Okay. Now it's your turn. What is Y1 in terms of probabilities in the five tuple? Whoa, now the chat ex exploded with emojis. <laughs> now, there we go. Um, I didn't really think about it. Times x. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I see. So we have x2. Ah, okay. Ah, oh, goodness. Uh. Uh, I believe it's this one. Please, no. Okay, let us just go over to. I don't want to talk about uh, about probability theory. I'm I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, it's just not something I want to do right now. I didn't know that we are going to have this. Other than that, it's a nice compilation. Um, Let's go to vector calculus. This is also something that I wanted to do. Also, this stream, um, I don't want it to go on for too long today. I still have some stuff to do. Terribly sorry for that. So that's going to be on the shorter side of things this time. Vector calculus in a nutshell. We have vectors there. It's a wind map. Okay. That's also a course that I haven't done before. So yeah, we are going to go ahead. I'm I'm excited to see what um, Brian is going to come up with next. Soon they are going to have like um, electro oh, electromagnetism and stuff like this. So that's something that's going to come pretty soon. Um, I'm pretty stoked about that. I also wanted to do some quantum computing with you guys, but there's so much to read in, in all of those courses. And on the one hand, I hate reading, and on the other hand, I don't want to sit here. 
silently for five minutes and read stuff. So yeah. Oh, thank you, I boy. I enjoy the content you pop out. <laughs> you you put out. Hoping you're safe. I'm pretty safe. Thank you, I boy. Um, this has been a super chat. Support the channel by doing super chats or by getting yourself super stickers, for example. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, now vector calculus. Okay. Ugh. Those interactive thing. Oh goodness, this is trippy. <laughs> Crazy animations. That's the cool thing about um, Brilliant. They do those nice animations all the time. So now. The gradient provides an example familiar from multivariable calculus with many important properties. The touch interactive block below shows the a level set f equals c or f equals to the, together with the gradient vector field. Zoom in and out and rotate to explore the 3D vector field, then select the true statement about the gradient from the options provided. It's perpendicular, right? Wait a m Oh no, the, the vector is... Ah, no. The, the vectors are perpendicular. But the gradient has constant length. Yeah, for sure the length is constant. Ah, oh, goodness. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, right. That makes perfect sense. Hmm. Ah, uh, there we go again. If you've ever had a compass or seen the north and the southern lights, you're aware of Earth's natural magnetism. Select from the options all quantities that can also be modeled by a vector field. The temperature... Temperature is, is a scalar, right? The flow of a river. Density. Density is mass per volt. Yes, okay, thought so, thought so. I was thinking about the units, so in a physical sense. Oh, goodness. This looks so weird. This is so weird. <laughs> Papa, in your next video, calculate the probability of two of your frequent viewers having Spider-Man profile pictures. That's an epic idea, Dennis Gekshu, my boy. <laughs> Using this intuitive... <laughs> Spider-Man. Spudramin. Using this intuitive notion of a flow line, choose the option that best describes the flow line for the two-dimensional vector field below. Isn't this a circle? Yeah, I mean, it was circular, so, yeah. Okay. How much this rectangle distorts under flow is directly related to the divergence, which we'll talk about next. Okay. The divergence measures how much of a vector field spreads out from a given point. We'll cover divergence in detail later in the course, but this qualitative, qualitative <laughs> description will do for right now. Below are two vector fields. Select the one that has the greatest divergence from the origin. Yes, exactly. I mean, if I think about this square, it's going to get bigger and bigger. It's going to be stretched way more over time. So maybe it has something to do with this. Creed from Mexico, Papa Flemmy. Hello, Umberto Segura Guzman. <laughs> okay. 
It'll take some work with flow lines to prove this, but the divergence of a two-dimensional vector field at x, y is blah blah blah. Option 1 in the previous problem, which just circled the origin, is explicitly given by... Huh? And so has divergence. So those are the vector components. Yes, computer divergence for the vector field of option 2. Um, 2, right? I mean... I'm not particularly certain. Yes, answers 2, I mean it's... 1 plus 1, okay? If you have one apple and you put another apple next to it, you have two apples. Analytic apple theory. It's crazy. Oh, now this weird bug is, is gone with the screen being weird, so... So, that's a relief, I suppose. Hey, triple dot, my son. The curl of a vector, of a two-dimensional vector field, is given by... The curl. <laughs> so that's rotation. As we will see in greater detail later in the course. The sentence ended there. That's that's weird if you think the sentence will continue. Compute the curl of the vector field that we encountered earlier. Okay. So this is thus del x of x minus del y of negative y is equal to zero. What? Oh! Negative, negative. Ah, oh, it's, it's positive. It's... <laughs> Papa, make a video where you derive and use the Piano axioms using analytic apple theory. <sighs> What's suck of one apple? I don't know. Suck of an apple. We should be back. Something was weird. I don't know what happened. Are we back on track? are back again. Um, I put snack in my hand and now we are back as it seems. So snack is with me right now. Um, it's now a pretty snacky pen that we are going to have here. Okay, snack is going to go around my pen. <laughs> That's a pretty excellent pen, not gonna lie. Snack is with me so the inner connection is going to be stable from now on. The position vectors of points on the line L through P and parallel R <laughs> If we think of T as time, snack. <laughs> cat is somewhere else. I don't know where, where the cat is. What are we having here? Okay. Experiment with the sliders and determine what quantity is most closely associated with the object's speed along the line. Oh, goodness. Those are so many parameters. So we are going to... In, in what dimension are we? Well... Now I see what has happened. This is... This is okay. What vector is this even? Um, 
Okay. Cat is, is doing pretty well, to be honest. Snake is also doing pretty well, not gonna lie. The speed along the line. Um, goodness. Speed along the line. The length, bro. Yeah. The, the thing is that the speed is just the magnitude of the velocity. So, so this makes sense. So this is just like the like the modulus of the vector. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Bundling these derivatives together into the vector gives us the complete info about the velocity of the object through space. For example, we will learn in this chapter that the speed is just the magnitude of the velocity, right? Exactly. If an object moves along the line, blah blah blah, compute its speed and enter your answer as an integer on the right. Snack, what are you thinking, my boy? Five? No, I don't think. Snack said that it's five. I mean, I'm going to trust Snack. I have trusted you. You were like a father to me. Oh. Filthy Snack. Let's see the explanation. Ah, oh, it's free. It's free. Queuing theory. Yeah. Pi is an integer, so that's totally right, I suppose. Hmm. Fuck snack. <laughs> In the block below you have control over the direction of the line called U and the position of a point P on L. Now instead of P by a little is given by R, compute the object speed which is the magnitude of this. Assume the magnitude of the unit vector is 1. Yeah, I, I, I mean it's the unit vector. Mm -hmm. Ah, wrong assumption. Ah, yeah. I was thinking that the absolute value of the sine function is going to be 1. Um, but that's obviously stupid. I mean... <laughs> not correct. Some weird animations we're having here. Oh, goodness, what is happening? Holy moly, guacamole. Use the plot and all the derivative definitions to determine which of the two vectors is the acceleration. Cosine. Negative sine, negative cosine. Okay, I mean, it's, it's just being derivatives. See ya, Werner. Have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe to Werner's new math channel. Werner Stein. Subscribe to him. Oh, okay. oh boy. This is cool. Woo! Can you see it rolling? They see me rolling. They hate it. The circle has radius R and centers where the star sits. What's one possible position? Vector of the planet.
Yeah, I mean, obviously. What else should it be? Oh, there's, there's so much to read. That's the one thing I do not enjoy about praying. There's always so much stuff to read and oh, this is not enjoyable for me. When it comes to reading, I just get tired and I'm losing motivation and yeah, just a tiny bit. Um, I'm, I'm going to do the stream for like, I don't know, 10 minutes longer. Um, I still have other stuff to do for today, so, so I'm terribly sorry about that. Just a short stream. I hope next stream is going to be pretty soon. Let's continue here. Which one corresponds to Blender's X acceleration? Um. To acceleration. I don't think that that's right. It is right. I was thinking, um, my train of thought was, oh, Emiliano, a nice bra moment there. Um, my train of thought was that we are going to have this, um, once you have, like, acceleration, you also have a centripetal force and a centrifugal force. So, something that's dragging you in or to the outside or more to the inside, so it's centripetal force. That's what I thought. And this is the blue vector, so... Just my two cents here. <laughs> Which vector represents the acceleration? You free? Yet again, I mean it's the same thing. Oh, only 6% done. That's a huge course. That's a that's a pretty long one, not gonna lie. Space curves! Ah. None you. Look at that bee flying! Ah, oh. Goodness! My boy! The bee! The bee is magnificent! Oh! That's so beautiful! I feel like a little kid again. Ah! Monsieur Bee! Oh, we I'm terribly sorry about that. That thing was uh, kind of hypnotic. <laughs> oh, now it's equipped with <laughs> with a vector. Look at that. That's like a great meme. Ah, oh, that's a great meme. It's like the B movie, but way cooler. Not gonna lie. Woo! <laughs> Big B. <laughs> Buzz. Position is perfectly represented by a vector called x of t. Now start time up again. Bus position vector depends on time. In fact, all continuous motion can be charted with a space curve. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Once we understand what space curves look like, we develop we develop calculus. Okay, let's continue. So we have. A set coordinate of 5, this is good. And we also have... Uh, the cosine of t in the first one... But it's... If we... Give me a second. So this is five. This is like phi or our t. Then we have like r is our vector. Then we have like the sine. This is actually the set coordinate. That's the first one. Maybe I'm wrong here. I'm probably wrong. Ah, oh, I knew it was the third one. Ah, 
where do I find my memes on various meme sites? I knew it was the third one. Why was I even thinking about it anymore? I've done a lot of theoretical physics and Lagrangian mechanics. I should have known that. I knew it. Oh, goodness. I'm such a useless booger. Snake, you failed me again. Yeah, you're a curly boy. Someone applied curl to snake. <laughs> Our poor Bebas is getting tired. Oh no. So she slowly descends to the ground. B. Bussy. Woo. 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 Wee. 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 Okay. Um. <laughs> Unit circle. Where does Bus eventually land? I mean, at Z being equal to zero. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you weren't any help at all. It's going to be in the... Positive Y and positive X direction. Is it in the... Ah, okay, okay, yeah. I should have done some calculations. I was going by the sketch here. Never trust a sketch, okay? Oh. Those legs, though. Oh, look at that ass. Look at it. Oh, goodness. That's like thick. That's pretty thick. Okay, let us continue. Yeah, <laughs> watching Vector B is more entertaining than the B movie ever wishes it was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do so many calculations at the moment. Mm. After a short break, Buzz is ready to head back home and help out around the hive. The hive. Buzz flies along the space cave, reaching the home hive. Okay, that, that, uh. Oh, it's DJ my dog. Another bee is setting off for the half at the same time and follows the space calf. Do they collide? Do they share? Some point? Is there some point in common? They arrive at the half at different times. I mean. The one scares by T-square, the other one doesn't, so nah, 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 don't think so. I do like math, indeed, but do you know what I like more? Maths, okay? Okay, flam up the maths. Ah, uh, if the damage half is modeled by the ellipsoid, oh, that's interesting, sliced through by the plane, the card can be described by the space calf. Ah, oh, goodness. Me and me wife. All I had on was me panties. <laughs> oh, that's a great meme. I love it. Um, I wasn't even thinking about it. Not gonna lie. Oh, Mohamed Ababu. Seriously. You are so annoying, Mohamed. I have won the battle already, Dennis, so... Yeah. Nothing to... Oh, goodness. There we go again. Ah. Uh, Bas, my boy. Ah, uh, it's so great. It's so great. Woo. Woo, buzzy boy. Okay, um... Just some stuff here. Too, too, too much to write. To read whatsoever. Okay. I'm a bit lazy at times, okay? For your 1 million subscriber special, burn your maths textbook so you become flimble maths. Thing is, I don't really have any maths textbooks except for almost impossible integrals, and that's it. That's the only book about maths that I own. 
and I only own it because I got it for free, so I don't know. Experiment with different values of A. What is the effect of increasing the size to values bigger than 1? Yes, exactly. Thought so. I mean, if we interpret it as the vector that's perpendicular to the to the circle, so like a tangent, then yeah, and things go scrrrra. Okay, the time dependence of a space curve tells us something about the velocity of flight. Suppose bus flies on a beeline. Oh, <laughs> beeline! <laughs> Boy, that sounds spicy. Described by x of t equals to t v to t v. Bus travels along the straight line desk, so her speed is blah blah blah. What vector correctly describes the direction of motion? The direction is the unit vector. So... Yes. I mean, it's the norm thing. So like the unit vector that we get here. It's just what's going to happen. Oh. That's kind of laggy and I don't know why. Oh goodness, that animation being kind of laggy though. <laughs> um, I mean, it's like the derivative yet again. Um, yes, okay. I mean, it wouldn't make any sense to put this into scalars up there at the moment. So we are talking about the derivative of the vector. So, so we are derivating its uh, components, basically. Just as we did for single variable functions, if x represents motion in space, but with Given this definition, select all options that apply to its tension to the space curve, exactly. It always has constant norm. I mean, it's still just independent, uh, dependent on t. It always has a constant norm. No, no, that totally depends on the individual um, coordinates. That was stupid. That ain't right. So yeah, we still have our derivative rules. Okay. Mm. Oh, sh ah, I was, um, that was totally stupid. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I was thinking that the dot is multiplication, but that is not right. The derivative of the scalar pro. Um, So my first hunch was correct. I mean, the, the last one didn't make too much sense to me. That's why I didn't choose it at first. That doesn't apply to the rotation. Okay, um, yeah. It is what it... Oh, that looks... What is going on here? This is kind of weird, to be honest. Um, what even is this? Look at the bear! He's so cute, and they are bombarding him with atomic missiles. Whew. That's kind of spicy. That's that's really spicy, not gonna lie. Okay, we are in the finals at the moment, my boys and girls. Bus velocity is V, and her position vector is Bill. How fast is she moving away from the half at the origin at this moment?
Ya. Uh, I don't know. What did they do here? I'm I'm terribly sorry. I didn't even understand um, the question. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I see, okay. So so this was my problem. Um, I have never dealt with the DRAM cohomology. Cohomology, I think it's something out of differential geometry or something. I don't know. Um, I never had those courses. Yeah, um, that was my problem too. I didn't know what X of T exactly is, so there wasn't really a time dependence. That was the thing what I didn't understand. So, yeah, okay. Already out of drink. What the? This is getting pretty violent. This video is definitely going to get demonetized. I, I can see it. Pure boy. Being attacked by this fake beer. What are the release times for the missile? I have no idea how I'm going to teach the gymnasium students. I have no idea. <laughs> Bra, Bear is getting incinerated by the missile. <laughs> what? See it. What is the Renegade dance? I'm going to go for two. A negative two. Hey! <laughs> Didn't even think about it. I I mean it's symmetric, it's a parabola. I I suppose. Let me think for a second longer. Ah. Too much stuff going on here. Never mind. And this finishes it up. Uh Hello, Lisa. <laughs> My wife was standing there. So, it was just a short little live stream today. But I thought I might as well do one again. I have already done brilliant today with a subscriber of mine. He's a patron of mine, a Patreon supporter, pledging quite a high amount of money to my channel. But he has the privilege to um, Skype with me and do brilliant together with me. And that's quite a nice thing to do. It was a lot of fun going with him through vector calculus a little bit, differential e equations and stuff like this. So it's a lot of fun. Um, you can also become a Patreon supporter by <laughs> taking a look at Brilliant. I hope you had at least a little bit of fun. There was a lot of reading yet again going on here. It just is what it is. Um, other than that, you should be able to see me now, I think. Ooh, I look good. No, I, I don't look good because there's no barber here at the moment that's opened up because of Corona Jan, okay, because of the Rona. Um, this is why I can't really make my hair and it's growing longer and longer and I just look ugly as freak. So yeah, there it goes. I'm going to say it once again. This video has obviously been sponsored by Brain.org. Um, you can support the channel by just trying out Brilliant.org. So take a look at the top of the description. There will be a link to Brilliant.org. You can try it out for completely free. So it, it really won't hurt you. Try it out for free. You are going to get access to a lot of the content there on, on Brilliant, even with the free version. And if you, if you get a kick out of it, maybe it's also worth for you to, I don't know, invest in like a premium membership there. But I don't want to um, 
say that you should invest into a premium membership, just try it out. It's really a lot of fun. And I also have a lot of fun with you, my subscribers, going through the brilliant stuff here. I'm gonna make more live streams like those. Um, next time with a bit more motivation, definitely. Um, I hope Brilliant is going to add more and more content starting next month yet again. So um, I'm quite excited for that. Try out Brilliant, support the channel this way. Also, got my silver play button today, so that's also quite ex exciting. Um, next mess related video on Friday. Then there's a vloggy type video on Sunday. Thank you guys for watching. What else can I say? Um, my name is Jeff. Number of my cut, Hannah. Snack is also going to say ciao. Yeah, Snack. You are going to say ciao today to the crowd, okay? Do you understand? Okay, Snack understands. Flammy, I feel like you have been recommended. What? Tire 7... No. Um, I don't know who that is. Um, up until the next video. What? <laughs> My wife is shaking her head. I don't know why. Up until the next video. Have a snacky day. Ciao. Okay, now, now I need to see. Okay, let's, let's zoom in on the camera. Snack, you are going to do this, mate. Yes, 